thank you for being here. I know I'm delighted to be here, though a little bit nervous, but we'll see what we can do. Harold Klerman said that theater must say something. It must relate to society, and it must relate to the world we live in. When I think about the best Broadway can be, I think about how we can hold a mirror up to who we are as a society and by the stories we tell and how that reflection can help us make a better world. Theater was always held in high regard in my family and always part of our lives. I continued that tradition with my own family and it was a wonderful way to pass on my love of theater and a wonderful way to have a shared experience and be able to communicate. I remember taking my son Jordan as a young teenager to see Ian McKellen's solo show, A Night Out. It was Sir Ian's own reminiscence of his parallel lives as an actor and a gay man. Sharing this play with him was one of the ways I could show Jordan that I supported him and would always be by his side, both figuratively and literally. Theater has always helped people communicate and has continually been at the forefront of social issues, long before television, long before mainstream movies. I wonder if there'd be a Glee without Rent, a Will and Grace without Torch Song Trilogy, the Cosby Show without a Raisin in the Sun, or Ally McBeal without the Heidi Chronicles. One of the most gratifying things about being a producer, for me, is having the opportunity to affect people's lives by what we choose to present. I think about stories that matter. I'm inspired by material that can possibly change people's minds where audiences leave a bit smarter, a bit more informed, empowered, and hopefully when appropriate, encouraged to do something in response. I realize it's difficult to quantify that effect. We don't have statistics to show how many people have taken a play's message or subject to heart or changed their thinking about any given subject. But for some plays, I actually can explain what we did and the concrete response we saw as a result of those efforts. And now for my minor technology. <laughs> Margaret Edson's Wit, which I produced in 1998, was a profound play about an English professor, Vivian Baring, and her stoic and academic reaction to the treatment for stage four ovarian cancer at a very well-known teaching hospital. My own life was forever altered by being involved with this play and like many, I was scared to delve into a play about a woman dying of cancer. But scared has always served as a challenge for me, and it was one of the most thoughtful and truthfully written plays I had ever read. I felt the story and how it addressed end-of-life care and the doctor-patient relationship needed to be heard and discussed by as many people as we could reach. And watching audiences in their seats after every performance silent in thought but eager to engage, made us realize that we needed to take this a step further once the curtain came down. We initiated what we called Talk Back Tuesdays, post-show conversations that are very common today, which offered people an opportunity to share their own personal stories and experiences. The series was one of the first, actually, to be done in the commercial theater realm. Mount Sinai, New York, and Sloan Kettering Hospital sent their doctors, residents, nurses, and staff, and many of them came on those Tuesday nights and contributed so much to our discussions about the issues that they confronted on a daily basis. Our cast was invited to Cornell Medical Center and Sloan Kettering to do readings from scenes of the play that addressed the patient-doctor relationship in ways that showed kindness and gentle care. This resulted in the creation of ethics classes being added to their med school curriculums, which are still taught today. I had no idea how far-reaching the impact of wit would be, but to this day, people come to me and say, oh my God, that play meant so much to me, and I really get choked up because it didn't mean a lot to a lot of people. Over a decade later, I was involved in another play that had an enormous effect in the community. It started with a one-night benefit reading that I was asked to produce for the Actors Fund and Friends Indeed. It was Larry Kramer's seminal play about the AIDS crisis, The Normal Heart. 25 years after it was written, the play remained as emotionally and overwhelming as originally, and that evening of the benefit I made it my mission to bring the play to Broadway so that more people could experience this powerful story. Magnificently and fiercely acted, the play was met with an astounding response 
touching all those who remembered, and more importantly, enlightening a younger generation, first learning of their history and their legacy. For the Broadway production, I wanted to be sure we maintained a charitable component as we had at the benefit. And a month before we opened, we launched the first ever Facebook rally where we pledged to donate $10,000 to Freedom to Marry if we got 10,000 likes on Facebook by opening night. Well, we were thrilled to donate a check to the organization which really led the fight for marriage equality, something Larry Kramer portrayed so beautifully at the last scene of his play way before its time. During a performance on the evening of June 24th of that year, the New York State Marriage Equality Act was passed in Albany. At the curtain call, <laughs> it was amazing, we announced that momentous occasion. We came out on stage and told the audience who was present, which led to cheering and crying and truly one of the most memorable nights we all had in the theater. We chose four well-matched charitable organizations to partner with, Human Rights Campaign, Friends Indeed, Amfar, and the Actors Fund again, and they received a portion of our show's proceeds, and our audience on a nightly basis received information about those organizations and how they could choose to become involved. Larry Kramer's righteous rage was the catalyst when he wrote the play, and in fact, for any of you that were there, you would have seen him standing outside the Golden Theater most nights, passing out flyers, it was a bold call to action for us to continue his fight. And to me, it was the purest example of theater reaching into the community. As I mentioned, it was important for me that younger audiences see the show. And so we did some interesting initi initiatives, $30 tickets for people under 30. We donated groups of tickets to the Alley Forney Center, the Point Foundation, Green Chimneys, Live Out Loud, among others. Jerry Mitchell organized a very special night. He brought over 400 young dancers to the normal heart. He said, I wanted to give them a stronger sense of why they're dancing and why they're taking off their clothes every year at Broadway Bears. <laughs> <laughs> why we're fighting for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. I later spoke with some of the young men who were there that night with Jerry's group, and I quote, I didn't understand the history of the disease. For me, the normal heart was about the power of community. When you have no one looking out for yourself, for yourself except your own community, you need to be active. Theater does look out for its own. Another said, one of the things that we in the theater are in a position to do is to inspire others and to look beyond ourselves at what we can give back. Another said, I left the show feeling stunned and yet empowered in some way to make a difference and it re-energized the way that I could help. And many told me they were moved to volunteer for organizations like GMHC and God's Love We Deliver, and for me that was the true test of my thesis. Daniel Beatty's show Through the Night, it also impacted young people, but in a very different way. Daniel combined a thrilling blend of humor, poetry, music, and drama to portray the stories of six black men in an inspirational performance that stressed the importance of mentoring and the impact of education on these men. I felt it was crucial that at-risk youngsters could come to see this play, so I created a program called Shine the Light, which partnered with New York City businesses and individuals to underwrite tickets for 2,500 tri-state area students. The groups were from local Title I schools representing the most underserved student population. For most of them, it was their very first theater experience the very first playbill they would hold in their hand. Daniel graciously met with all of them after the performances. And this play had such an optimistic and empowering message. I know this had a huge effect on these teenagers. And we were able to connect those interested in mentoring with two great organizations, New York Needs You and Big Brothers Big Sisters. We also filmed a performance, and I'm hopeful to get it shown in schools across the country. That's my next mission when I leave. I had the great joy of producing Nora and Delia Efron's little gem, Love, Loss, and What I Wore. This collection of intimate stories used clothing and accessories and the memories they trigger to tell funny and often poignant stories to women that they could truly relate to. During our three-year run, we had 32 rotating casts of 120 fabulous actresses. 
Dress for Success was our perfect benefit partner. We had a collection box in the lobby of the theater and encouraged our audiences to donate gently used clothing and accessories. We donated a dollar from each ticket to Dress for Success and loads of goodies for women entering the workforce. Plays that empower women are important to me. Proof, B. Arthur on Broadway, Three Tall Women, How I Learned to Drive, any play that sheds light on women's issues that encourage my daughters and my granddaughters' generations to be strong and independent are plays that I want to present. So when we hold up that mirror to reflect our society, plays like Irena's Vow, Celebrating One Woman's Courage Against All Odds, Caroline or Change, Shedding Light on Class and Race, or The Temperamentals, Exploring the Earliest Roots of Gay Activism, can all make a difference. And lastly, my newest love in my life, Kinky Boots. Written by Cindy Lauper, Harvey Firestein, and directed and choreographed by Jerry Mitchell. This big-hearted musical celebrates acceptance, compassion, and understanding. The main message is you change the world when you change your mind. I know people will leave Kinky Boots feeling joyous and feeling uplifted and singing every fabulous Cindy Lauper song, but I also know that they will leave with a sense of how to respect one another's differences. So I think the best Broadway can be is both the stories we put up on our stage and the actions we're inspired to take off stage. If we share the deep belief that theater matters, that theater can change us and ultimately change the world, then isn't that the best Broadway can be for all of us? Thank you. Mm -hmm.